we have the tradition of the church to explicate it more fully, but also this. Our current pope says this. One of the purposes of Trinitarian language, so God is one, but God is three, is meant to confound us. It's meant to block us. It's meant to confuse us. You said say what? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. <laughs> Folks, an objection that no Christian can answer. An objection so powerful that it threatens the very... Ah, who am I kidding? This is one of the stupidest objections ever from an ideology that specializes in producing stupid objections. When Muslims post this objection, Christians often respond with some basic mathematics. They point out that one times one times one equals one. Or if the Muslim demands that we use addition when we're talking about God, Christians will point out that the God of the Bible, unlike the God of the Quran, is infinite. So it would be more accurate to say, infinity plus infinity plus infinity equals infinity. Good morning. Today, very quickly, I want to go over with you the, the perverse nature of the Trinity. Um, I understand if you're a Trinitarian, this video is probably going to greatly offend you, and I don't really care. I don't really care. Uh, there are those out there who defend the scriptural Godhead, but most of those who do, I don't care for and uh, think they are heretics myself. Okay? But, nonetheless, as far as I'm aware, not too many people want to talk about this side of this blasphemous, satanic trinity that Christians defend unto the death, and are willing to put people on the chopping block because of, okay? You saw the little snippets at the beginning of this video. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Dave Wood. <laughs> and that Bob, that Bob Baron guy. <laughs> the Trinity is meant to confuse you. Uh-huh, yeah. But, like I said, I want to discuss with you the perverse nature of the Trinity. The Trinity, the symbolism that accompanies the Trinity, is perverse. And, as I'm going to prove to you, is sexual in nature. The Trinity is perverse. It is a perverted teaching of the devil, which he, the devil, is going to live up to within the book of Revelation, and we're going to look at that. But before we get anywhere, please get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version. You're looking at, by the way, what is called a uh, triketra. Okay, we're going to get to that here in a, little, in a little minute here. But Leviticus chapter 18, we are going to be reading verses 24 on to verse 30. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse at the things we are going to be looking at. You might be saying, well, Brad, why are we looking in Leviticus 18? Isn't that the chapter in Leviticus where the sexual sins are pronounced? Yeah. Yeah. And this teaching of the Trinity and the symbolism that accompanies it and we're going to look also in this book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry by Manley Palmer Hall, 33rd degree Freemason. 
we're going to look at the Egyptian trinity, uh, an aspect of it, which is what Catholics, Christians, are taught to worship. They're one God comprised of three persons, okay? Absolute heresy and blasphemy. But let's read this in Leviticus chapter 18, verses 24 on to verse 30. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. Hmm. And of course, in context, it's, uh, it's referencing to all these perverse sexual sins that man did before the law came around telling uh, mankind what was perverse. Because before this, men thought it was okay to lay with animals. Men thought it was okay to lay with mankind. What does this have to do with the Trinity? You'll see. Okay, let's continue. Uh, verse 27. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them, commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore ye shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. It is an, a, a defilement unto you to be a Trinitarian. Okay? What, what does this have to do with anything, Brad? What does this have to do with anything? Go to Exodus chapter 20. Okay? Exodus chapter 20. Verses 1 on to verse 6. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The Trinity is a graven image. Is <laughs> a graven image. Look at that. You see that one in the middle right there? With the, uh, you got the one here? Well, here, let's look at it. Let's look at it. See this? See this? This is the Catholic uh, depiction of the Trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, and there's the little bird that poops on everybody. Okay? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 22 on to verse 25. Romans chapter 1. Verses 22 on to verse 25. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, aren't you so glad that you get these uh, Jesuit-trained cemeterians to come around telling you about the Trinity? Like that Bob Barron guy? The Trinity is meant to confuse you? David Wood? One plus, one plus. <laughs> and Jesuit James White, the brother of Smiley David Daniels Publications? Aren't you so glad that you have these brilliant, highly intellectual people to tell you the madness of the Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic, pagan trinity? 
Aren't you so happy? Don't you feel blessed? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up unto un, up to uncleanness to the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The creature. You read in Ezekiel, what is it, 28? Satan is a created being. Now, here in verse 25, worshiping uh, the creature rather than the creator, worshiping themselves. You know, you a lot of you wor uh, worship yourself that you look at in the mirror every day. But you got to remember, that stems from Satan himself. I will be like the Most High. Okay? All right? But this thing about the Trinity, okay? The Trinity is heresy. The Trinity is blasphemy. Okay? I don't care that the Roman Catholic Church from its inception, that was the very first thing that they started to teach. One God comprised of three persons. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. And all these uh, atheists and Muslims and Buddhists and stuff like that who mock, the, who think they're mocking the faith that was once delivered onto the uh, saints, they're mocking this Christianity, which worships one God made of three persons, and they have every right to do so. But this teaching of the Trinity, like I said, I don't have the books anymore that uh, show that from their inside, but you can look this up for your own. Do it on your own time. When the Roman Catholic Church uh, got, began, when it started pushing out doctrine, the very first thing they started to push was this. One God and three persons. Blasphemy. Okay? And like I said, most of the times that you hear these guys, especially that James White, you know, uh, professing them himself to be wise, he became a fool. Okay? Jesuit James White. Okay, you listen to that guy, the way how these guys go about describing this satanic trinity. Uh, like the guy said at the beginning of the video, the satanic trinity is meant to confuse you. And there is no true trinity. There is no true trinity. The trinity, dear friend, is satanic. Okay. Okay. Here's the importance of the teaching of the Trinity to Satan. Go to Revelation chapter 16 to start. Just one, a couple of one verse things. Okay. Revelation 16 verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now stop right there. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Three unclean spirits. What do we see? We see the dragon. Who is the dragon, by the way? You might be asking that. Well, who is the dragon? Oh, where is that? Uh, that is in uh, Revelation chapter... What is that? Uh, 13 or is it 12? Yes. Revelation 12, verse 9. And, uh, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, old serpent from the Garden of Eden, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The great dragon, that's Satan, the devil, Lucifer, okay? So, go back to Revelation 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, Okay, you look up the Egyptian god that had the frog's head. I forget what his name is. Okay, like frogs come up out of the mouth of the dragon. There's one. Okay, and out of the mouth of the beast, that man of sin, the son of perdition. And out, 
and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. There's your trinity. There's your trinity. But, oh wait, Revelation 20 also, uh, just another one verse stop here. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil, the dragon, Lucifer, there's so many names, okay? The dragon, or excuse me, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Yes. Those of you who worship the Trinity, those of you who worship another Jesus, those of you who are not saved, your destination, unless you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name and he save you. Your destination is this lake of fire. And you're going to be in the company of really great people like Lucifer, that man of sin, the son of perdition, and the false prophet. Oh, you'll be, a, you'll be in the company of popes, world, powerful world leaders, entertainers, superstars. Yeah, you're going to be in really good company. Is that what you want, huh? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want, isn't it? But there's your trinity. The trinity is satanic, dear friend. The trinity is satanic, and it is of a sexual, perverse nature. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 32, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh, Exodus, excuse me. Exodus chapter 32, okay? Exodus chapter 32. Now, see this, like I said, see this? This is the Roman Catholic. This is what, you know, most Christians, pretty much 99% of Christians believe in the Trinity. And, you know, these Christians that are being deceived in the church buildings by uh, their Jesuit trained people can't really, I mean, it, it they ought to search the scriptures to see whether these things are so. But ever since the inception of Roman Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church, for centuries they have pushed one God of three persons. Like Hitler said, you tell a lie long enough, often enough, and loud enough, sooner or later people will believe it's true. And the centuries that Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, has been preaching and teaching this heretical, satanic doctrine of the Trinity. But in Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 through 6, Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 through 6, this thing of one, one God made up of three, where does this, where does, where did this begin? Where did this begin? We're going to look at some evidence here that this idea of one God being comprised of many kinds of beings is actually nothing new. But we're going to see that it stems from the devil himself. It stems not from God. Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 and verse 6. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, plural, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man, man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Here's the brilliance of Aaron the priest. Break off the golden earrings which are in your ear, which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them on to me. 
And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them on to Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. Now check this out. After he had made a molten calf, a molten calf, singular. Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. You know what? For, for a while we're going through the scriptures, I beg your pardon. I beg, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Here. Let's, let's, let's get this blasphemy thing out of the sight of us for right now because we'll be getting to this in a moment. Okay? There. Okay, but look at that. A molten calf. One molten calf was made. Just one molten calf. Doesn't say many molten calves, does it? It says a molten calf, singular. And look what he says. And they said, or this, and they said, these be thy gods. O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. A molten calf. Singular. These be thy gods. Plural. Don't, don't look at me. Look at that. Look at that verse, man. Study that verse. Look at that verse. A molten calf and gods. Hmm. Let's continue. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Singular. Interesting. And what did they do? What did they do? And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And during this playing, can you reckon that there might have been some fornication going on? Hmm? Are we to just say the, the, what, the play? Fool around, dance, and all that kind of stuff. While well, they were worshiping a molten calf singular, which they said, these be thy gods. But it's just one molten calf. And they rose up to, uh, what is it? And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And they were singing and dancing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and what does and what did the Lord say in verse seven? And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf. And have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods. This is our Lord speaking. O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So a singular molten calf, gods. One calf, gods. And our Lord just said, What? They have corrupted themselves in doing what? Worshipping a single molten calf. But attributing unto that one molten calf, one calf, gods. Don't look at me. Please don't be looking at me. Look at the verses, okay? Do you see that? Do you see that? God in three persons? <laughs> Give me a break, man. But then again, you get these Jesuit-trained cemeterians like the, the, the Bishop Bob, <laughs> David Wood, and of course, uh, his self-righteousness, James White, Jesuit James White. Okay? It's insanity, dear people. 
And, and, and okay, now go to Deuteronomy chapter six. Now we we just I, we just saw that God said that this was a what? That this was a what? What did God say? They have and okay, and the Lord God verse seven in Exodus chapter thirty two. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Because what? They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I have which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and said, and have sacrificed it unto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So this idea of one God that's divided into many other little gods, do you, do you not clearly see, please tell me you do, do you not clearly see that just perhaps our Lord isn't, isn't for such heresy? Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And they rose up, they ate, they drank, rose up to play. Do you think there might have been some fornication going on during that uh, time of playing around because they had just worshipped a molten calf, which they said, these be thy gods? Hmm? What do you think? What do you think? And the calf, the Brahma bull, sexual in nature. Just like the pagan holiday Easter. Uh, you ever wonder the jackrabbit thing and the egg? Have you ever, have you, have you figured that out? And hey, you uh, defenders of the birthday of Tammuz, Hey, where were you to defend people's God-given right for Astarte? Where were you to defend that? But and then, then never mind, never mind. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four and five. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. One. The Lord our God is one Lord. Again, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay? This is the God. The Godhead is spirit, soul, and body. Okay? We are made in the image of God. Because, again, we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Just like God does. Okay? Just like God does. Go to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. That is just before the end of the minor prophets. Okay? If you have reached Malachi or Malachi. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if you reach Malachi, turn the pages to your right. Go that way, okay? Zechariah chapter 14, verses 4 and verse 9. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord thy God shall come, and all the saints with thee. The Lord thy God shall come, and all the saints with thee. It's talking about the second coming, and the saints, those who are redeemed... We who are of the church of the living God, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? We are the saints that are going to be coming down with him at his second coming. You really want to get saved today, right now. 
so that when the redemption of the purchase possession happens, you get out of here. And you get to come back with our Lord. Okay? All right? Because most of you Christians who are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, you ain't going to make it, man. <laughs> you ain't going to make it. And you got heretics out there lying to you about, you know, cutting off the hand and gouging it. Get saved now. Before it's too late. But let's continue. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Because the brightness of the clouds, okay? If, if it's at night, it's going to be bright. The brightness of his coming, okay? Get it? And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. There shall be one Lord and his name. One. One Lord. One God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. And Trinitarians, what do they do? God is not the Father, uh, uh, Jesus is not the Father, and uh, the and Jesus is not the Son, whatever they say. And when you come up, well, Jesus is the Father. <laughs> Off with your head, right, Catholic? Or should I say, right, Baalite, worshiper? Right, worshiper of the golden phallus? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But now, go to, uh, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. There are several videos on the channel where we talk about the, the scriptural Godhead and um, mock the Satanic Trinity, because it's worthy to be mocked. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in the Old Testament, we just looked at it, said it was a corrupt thing. And we saw the people who worshipped a molten calf and said that they those were their god, that that was their gods. Huh. So one entity comprised of many other entities. One god comprised of three. You get it. I know you get it. Okay, this, okay, the teaching of the Godhead, which is scriptural, it's not confusion. The Trinity! You, 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 you saw it! You saw it at the beginning! That Catholic schmuck! A uh, Bab! Baron Bab! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, this has nothing to do with you. Sorry. But Baron Bob, or whatever his name is, the Trinity is meant to confuse you! <laughs> and of course that idiot David Wood... I didn't put anything with James White because it's, just, it's like I don't want to mung, uh, uh, numb your mind, okay? But Matthew chapter 28, okay, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, singular, and of the Son, singular, and of the Holy Ghost, in the name of. Notice it doesn't say names. It says name. What, 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 do, they, what do they call? Uh, what do they call the Father? Right? Some of these heretics. Yahweh. Yahweh doesn't appear in the authorized version of scriptures. What do they call Jesus? Yehashua. Gesundheit. Hmm? What do they call the Holy Ghost? Uh, the Baruchs, whatever it is, huh? No, 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 no. No. It's not that you give an individual name for the Father, uh, the Son, and the Holy... No, because God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So when you see, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, that's one name which comprises Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
not three persons that make one God. You're not going to find in Scripture three persons making one God. That's, no. The closest you come to it is what we already looked at in Exodus chapter 32, and that was about a calf. Okay? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Okay? The name, singular name, one name. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Okay? Okay? We're not touching anything in John because we've gone over that quite a bit. Uh, there'll be links in the description box for you to, to go over and stuff like that, okay? Acts chapter 4, oh, verses 10 on to verse 12. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is, the, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Philippians, of course, Philippians chapter 2. Okay, These are not even the strongest verses to, to prove to you that the Trinity is satanic. They're, 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 like I said, check out the videos in the description box. If you don't want to check them out and just uh, shoot off at the mouth, I'm going to block you. Okay? Okay? I understand that, unfortunately, this hellacious, um, perdicious teaching of the satanic Trinity is not going anywhere. I, I understand that. Actually, I also understand that, in fact, it's probably going to increase the closer and closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession. Because, as we have already looked at, the Trinity is integral to Satan and his deception. Okay? Why do you think the Catholics are willing to chop people? Why do you think, what's his name, um, uh, Calvin was willing to chop people's heads off when they denounced the... Trinity. Hmm? But Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Oh. Oh, let's see. Let's read from verses uh, 5 on to verse 12. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robber, robbery to be equal with God. And the Bibles mess this verse up, okay? But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. The likeness of men. Okay? The likeness of men. Hold your place here. Uh, these uh, Catholic skin suit worshippers can't stand this part of Scripture. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 4. There is therefore no, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Apparently you uh, big uh, King James Bible believing Christians out there. Uh, some of you, a select few. Uh, apparently you, you know, and you're, you're, you're the upper class. You're, you're from the old country, England. You can't fig, you can't read plain English, can you? It's because you worship cookie. But 
that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. These Trinitarians, they walk after the flesh, not after the Spirit. Because the Trinity, the Satanic Trinity, will be in the flesh <laughs> uh, in the book of Revelation during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's integral to the deception of Satan. Okay, but go back to Philippians chapter 2. Okay, let's read verse 7 again. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Meaning that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh God was manifest in the flesh and we looked and saw that the flesh was sinful but God within flesh never sinned and God who went to the cross and died okay yes all right because he never sinned unto his death that in in that he never sinned that is what sanctified the sinful flesh, okay? So that God in flesh, Christ in flesh, did what man could never do. Hence, God in sinful flesh, in that he never sinned, sanctified that sinful flesh. You must be too brilliant or too stupid to figure that out. That's, that's, a babe, not even a year old, can figure that out. Okay? What's your problem? Put the booze away and stamp out the cigarette. Okay? Because you probably don't have that much time. Uh -huh. Okay? But, let's continue. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That does not mean that you're working to save yourself you're working out what the Lord has put into you himself that the Lord that you must decrease but he must increase okay okay all right and of course the Johannian comma which is which I find very in Johannian comma okay that's first John chapter 5 verse 7 okay which is so ironic because the Bibles that you know, Barrett Bob and uh, David Wood and his exaltedness, uh, Jesuit James White. James White, by the way, okay, who hates the, the scriptures, hates the scriptures, would burn, uh, I believe, don't quote me, but as I understand it, Jesuit James White even made a mention of burning all the authorized version of the scriptures. I might be wrong on that, don't quote me on that, but, uh, He's a Jesuit. True, like David Daniels said, there's no paper trail proving that Jesuit James White is in fact a Jesuit. But he, I mean, come on, come on. He's at the very least a coadjutor. At the very least, okay? But what's ironic is the Bibles take out what is referred to as the Johannian comma. First John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the capital W Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Well, how do you, well, how do you de derive at which one is which? Well, first of all, let's start with the Spirit. That's, uh, that, come on. Sorry, the, whole, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, okay? The Lord is that spirit, okay? Second Corinthians chapter 3, read the whole chapter, but the specific verse is 17, okay? And the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, okay? Some will tell you that means charity. They're crazy, they're heretics, okay? 
uh, whatever. But, okay, so the spirit, self-explanatory. The flesh, the word, the word made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's simple. But see, devils and coadjutors do anything they can to refute that. That pure, simple teaching of the Godhead. Okay? And of course, our Lord says, And my Father is greater than I. What is greater than body and spirit? The soul, which is the Father of the Godhead. Okay, so we see the Father, which is the soul of the Godhead. The Word, John chapter 1, the Word made flesh. Okay, the Word made flesh. And the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay, it's not, it's people. People. Okay, the Godhead is simple. You're made in the image of God. Well, Brad, if God looks like you, he's ugly. Thank you. <laughs> but we're made in the image of God. We all have a soul. We all have a spirit. We have a body. Even you wicked devils out there. You, even you, yes, you. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. That's how we're made in the image of God. Okay? It's very simple. It's very simple. But now, now let's say, okay, now we, we've been through some scriptures here. Now let me, I got to get this right. Okay, there we go. Whoa, 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 little one. Okay, so let me see. We go to this one. All right. So you see the Trinity there, but like I, like I had said to you, right here, we have, this is the tri trichetra. Now, this is a satanic symbol. You see this on some of the, uh, like, for example, like I mentioned, the non-King James Version. Uh, some of them have that right on. You, A lot of you know what this is, okay? Now, you see this? This is three interlocking sixes, okay? See, you got one, two, and three. Those are three sixes interwoven. Okay, that right there, dear friend, is 666, just what you're looking at, okay? So when you see the non-King James Version sporting the trichetra, that is a satanic symbol. That is three sixes interwoven together. That is 666, right in front of your face, okay? Okay, but now we see this, yes. God is not the Father. No, wait, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Fa uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. And what happens? You say that Jesus is the Father. Jesus is not the Father. James White even, you know, big about that. And that will get some of these Christians like, oh, oh, oh. now, Bear with me here, okay? Bear with me. This is, um, I, I don't mean, to, I do mean to do this, but bear with me, okay? See this? Check this out. What is that, Brad? We're all adults here. I think you know what that is. That is the female reproductive um, system. Scripturally referred to as the matrix. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to, where, where did I write that down? To numbers. The, the word matrix appears five times in scripture, okay? And when you try to look up female matrix in a Google search, 
they give you that stupid Hollywood movie. But go to Numbers chapter... Where, where are we going? Th um, three? Numbers chapter three. Okay? Because some will argue that uh, with the earlier appearance of Matrix in the uh, book of Exodus, it's like, well, that's only referring to animals. Numbers chapter 3, verse 12... Uh, uh, let's read verse 11 and 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine. And another one, and Numbers uh, chapter 18 Verse 15, don't, I'm, I'm going to get that out of your face, but th this, this people, people, do you see that? But one more, one more, uh, Numbers 18, verse 15. Everything that openeth the matrix and all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men, be of men, mankind, or beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shalt thou surely redeem, and the first sling of unclean beasts shalt thou redeem. So the matrix is what? That! Do, can you not see that? Can you not see that? Now, like I, thought, like I told you, usually, usually you'll see the trichetra, which is three interwoven sixes, six, six, six. This is, uh, that, that imbecile idiot, uh, David Wood, uh, his video, it has that very thing on there. This, that thing of the Trinity is that. The female matrix. The Trinity symbol, this is that. That is a sex symbol. Because, okay, now here, here I've, I've subject. You got the point, okay? You got the point, okay? There, you got the point. That's a sex symbol. You just saw the evidence. That is based off of the female reproductive system. And Catholics... Worship Mary, Semiramis, or Isis. Now, while we're talking about perverse sex symbols, okay, let's go to another one. Okay, let's go to another one. All right, let's go to another one. Mason symbol. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. The compass and the square and the G. I don't know if you can see this on the picture of this, on uh, the cover there. You can see George, George Washington wearing the Masonic white bib over the loins. Okay. Mr. Palmer Hall, even himself in this book, uh, makes mention that they wear that to symbolize that they were carpenters even within because the term mason is found in the scriptures yes but they say that they wear that white bib over the loin area because it shows that they were you know carpenters no no that's not why they do that now okay the compass the compass is mobile. That's on the top. Symbolizing the male. The male on top of the compass of the square. The female. The G. Masons tell you that that stands for God. No, it does not. It stands for generative principle or generativity. Okay? That's what it truly stands for. Okay? And the Masons wear that white bib 
Not because of symbolism that they were, you know, carpenters and they built Solomon's temple. That's what they tell you. That's what they tell the exoteric, the uninitiated, the, the common people. While the esoteric, the in crowd, you know, the, the highly intellectual people, they know what this is about. Manly Palmer Hall was a 33rd degree Freemason. 33rd degree Freemasonry also, in, in, uh, according to the Knights Templars, involved sodomy. That's why you, you read in the scriptures uh, a lot of sodomy with these pagan temples. But as we had looked at, the symbol of the Trinity that we looked at is nothing more than the matrix. Nothing more. And Catholics worship Mary as the Queen of Heaven. Queen of Heaven. But see, again, this is a sex symbol. The, uh, the compass on top, the square on the bottom, and the G in the middle does not stand for God. Generativity. Generative principle. There's a mason that lives right down by me. And um, quite flirtatious with all the women. Hmm. But, but, now, I'm going to read you a little from this book. Now, see, see, see that? See that, George Washington? With the bib there, Okay. There are those out there who want to say that George Washington was a Baptist. Uh, he might, he may have been. Uh, Freemasons like Jesuits um, will involve themselves in many religions. Benjamin Franklin, he bowed at every altar. He was a Freemason, and he's in hell. Now, the common misconception is and a lot of people, uh, a lot of heretics, to divert attention away from the Vatican, will say that the Masons are the ones that control the world. No. At one time in history, proven here and also in other writings, such as the one from, um, what is it, uh, Mary uh, the Cusack, the Black Pope, okay? There was a time when Masons and Jesuits fought. But the Jesuits infiltrated just like everything else and have overtaken, overrun, and control Freemasonry. Okay? Uh, Francis and Sosa, they are high-level Freemasons, but they were first Jesuits. Masonry doesn't control Jesuitism. Jesuitism controls Masonry. Okay? You have to remember that. Okay? But, very interesting here we're going to read. Okay? Now, here, let's, okay, you, 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 you get the point. You get the point. Masons, uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, let me, let me, uh, let me get this because we're done with that, okay? There we go. All right. Now, going to be reading from where my finger is on to right here. So if you can see that, pause that and read it. Okay. Freemasonry uh, exposing them is not my strong point. There is a brother I know from uh, Northeast who has a lot more pertinent information on this. Um, but, uh, you know, all you need to know about Freemasons are that they're uh, satanic and they serve the Jesuits. The Illuminati was founded by Weissop, a Jesuit, okay? But, verbatim, from the inscriptions on the Metternich uh, Steel, S-T-E-L-E, -E, it seems that Set, Set, must have imprisoned Isis and her son Horus. Wait, 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 wait. You see? Okay. Okay. Let me see where my finger is. Okay. Can you, can you see? Uh, that, 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 everything is backwards with this, with this, uh, there we go. 
Everything is backwards with the OBS thing, okay? There, can you see that, where my finger is? Okay. So we see here already Isis, Horus, Set, IHS, symbol of the Jesuits, Isis, Horus, Set. This is the Osirian, o, Osirian cycle that we're reading from, okay? It's the Egyptian trinity. Catholics and Jesuits tell you what? Jesus, Hamador, Salvator. Hamadan, Jesus, Hamadan, Salvator. Jesus, the savior of mankind. No, no. Isis, Horus, Set. You, you see IHS anywhere, man? Woman? Run. You're in your little Christian church building and you see an IHS? The goddess is made to say, I am Isis, and I came forth from the house wherein my brother Set had placed me. Thoth, the prince of law, again came to her assistance and aided Isis to escape from the house prison of Set. Thoth, Thoth also at this time prophesied that Horus would sit upon the throne of his father and rule the double empire of Egypt. And see, Semiramis, the wife of Nimrod, marries her son, um, Ninus, because she says that Ninus is Nimrod reincarnated. This is where this derives from. Upon the advice of Thoth, Isis hides the child in a papyrus swamp, thus saving him from the wrath of Set. Isis returning, having left her son at Butos, and fashioning a magical boat out of papyrus. Sound familiar? Stolen? from the pages of scripture of Moses, traversed the whole of the empire, and she met with the scattered parts of her husband. Yes, Osiris was hacked into pieces, as it is said that Nimrod was hacked to pieces and had his body parts sent all over or something like that. Okay, uh, the book by Alexander Hislop, the two Babylons, which His Holiness doesn't like because it refutes the worship of uh, uh, Horus or Tammuz on the 25th or whatever, but whatever, okay? Uh, the uh, two Babylons also talks a little bit about this, okay? About how Nimrod supposedly had his body hacked to pieces, okay? All right? Nimrod. Nimrod. More on that on another video later uh, this week. It's not going to be too many videos this week because this is going to be a busy week, but let's continue, okay? Ah, okay. As she met with the scattered parts of her husband, she buried each one separately. First, however, encasing it in a magical mummy composed of wax, incense, and grain seed. She finally recovered all the parts of Osiris except... The phallus. The phallus. The phallus. The male member. The obelisk is a male phallus. The, uh, you know, in 1984, George, uh, George, Ronald Reagan was sworn in, uh, in office in front of the phallus of Osiris. Church buildings have a steeple. Yes. She finally recovered all the parts of Osiris except the phallus, which had been thrown into the river and devoured by three fishes. This organ Isis reproduced in gold, and having performed all the ceremonies necessary to ensure the life of Osiris in the underworld. The golden phallus. The G in the middle 
of the Mason sign. And the Trinity symbolism that we saw derived from the female matrix. Well, there's the matrix. Okay. Are you getting this? Let's continue. She returned to her son Horus, and by the thurgic uh, arts of which she was mistress, saved him from death from the stings of scorpions. Saved her son from what? From death? Now hold on. What do the Catholics teach about Mary, which is the Queen of Heaven, talked against in the scriptures in Jeremiah chapter 44? What do Catholics say? Mary is co-redeemer? Horus, having grown to man's estate and having received from his mother the tradition of his father's murder, longed to avenge the evil deed. Osiris appeared to his son in a vision, instructing him in the means by which he could overcome the hosts of Typhon. We are led to infer that Horus gathered about him an army which, meeting the host of Typhon, battled with them for many days, achieving victory. Typhon, another name for the devil, was taken prisoner and turned over to the custody of Isis. She, being his sister, could not put him to death, but set him at liberty, which so incensed Horus that he laid hands upon his mother and removed from her head the insignia of royalty. Thereupon Thoth gave her a new helmet made in the shape of an ox's head. Typhon next accused Horus of illegitimacy, but Thoth proves his royal descent. Typhon again goes into battle against Horus. In fact, two battles are mentioned in both which Typhon is worsted, and Horus regains the kingdom of his father and is regarded to at least a certain degree as the actual incarnation of Osiris. Again, again, the tradition is that Semiramis married her son of Nimrod, Ninus, and that Ninus was the reincarnation of Nimrod. That's masonry for you. And the golden phallus. Dear people, you must understand. You must understand. This trinity thing is so perverse and disgusting and satanic. And like I said, it is integral to Satan in the days of the time of Jacob's trouble. When the Trinity, that all, that 99% of Christianity, 99.9% .9 of Christianity worships one God can, of three persons, that's insanity. That's insanity. And you have seen the evidence. You have seen the evidence. And from Manly Palmer Hall's own writings, the Trinity in nature is perverse, dear friend. I understand that for centuries, because of Rome, because of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, that many people have been deceived by this erroneous teaching of the Trinity. The Trinity is a perverse sexual thing. And you, as the Church of the Living God, ought to abhor it and stay away from it. The Authorized Version of the Scriptures does not teach a 
three person trinity it teaches that jesus is the father that god is one god comprised of spirit soul and body jesus himself says that he is the father okay have you have i been so long time with you and yet hast thou not known me philip he who has seen me has seen the father okay one god comprised of spirit soul and body that is what the scriptures teach this satanic trinity is what the bibles teach which guys like baron bob david wood james white endorse the bibles that come from the vatican So, question now is, what do you do? What do you do with this? You know, coming out with this, saying that the Trinity is perverse, and linking it, right? You saw the evidence, okay? This video alone would get me killed. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, oh, oh, you're going to see the Trinity. And as we have lightly proven, this idea of a singular God comprised of many, God our Father has nothing to do with, but condemns it as corruption. Way back in Exodus chapter 32. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. A uh, quick video. Um, this week is a busy week. Um, Friday, uh, I turned 48 years of age. And this weekend, God got something going on. So this week is going to be a busy week. Going to get some video, this video, and there's another video coming, uh, if not Wednesday, Thursday. But after Friday, going to be in, already in communicado, but, uh, but just so you know, um, please pray for one another. Please pray for one another. There is a beloved sister who is on an adventure to see her family. Please keep her in your prayers. Please pray for our brother from out northeast, that he may continue to seek the Lord in all things, and that the Lord be his comfort. Uh, my best friend Alexander Hartley, pray for him. Pray for each other. Pray for each other. We all need prayers. But that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us, who help us. We need all the prayers and help we can get. Thank you. Love you. See you in the next video.